All right. All righty. Be Luthman. How's well, your day been going, Joey? You know, it's been going pretty good. I uh, haven't done anything. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's like good. it's like still barely morning over here, but I I just haven't done anything yet. So, <laughs> but I'm hanging out here now. Still, day's still young. Day is still young. Yeah. <clears throat> so let's get right to it. What are you most excited for that's happening right now? I mean, I we've got um, this feature coming out. Um, called The Last Champion, um, and that has uh, is starring Cole Hauser, and um, and Glenn Withrow is our director uh, slash co writer uh, alongside Hallie Todd, his wife, who she played the the mother on uh, Lizzie McGuire. Um, so yeah, so she's she's really fun to work with. They're all really fun to work with, um, and so I got to basically. Um, we got to do some wrestling, so I'd never done that before, so I had to train for that. Um, and of course, <laughs> I I was training with guys that were. It was, I mean, it was good. It was good practice, at least. Uh, but I I was training with um, some guys who were like fifty pounds over my you know my weight limit, and so uh, it was <laughs> it was a uh, it was pretty tough. But no, I loved it. It was super fun. So that. Um, I don't know when exactly that's coming out. I do know it's soon because we finished all of our ADR. We finished. Uh, I know that I know they're very close with editing and they're like almost done with it. So um, it's probably a couple months away, um, I would say. But uh, check it out. Uh, that is going to be really cool. Yeah, definitely. I'll be looking for that. I saw something you you were putting out recently with with a a partner in in the works of a short film project you're funding on Kickstarter. Right. right, right. Well, well Kickstarter we um yeah, that was um we got we got uh, a lot of our budget from that um which was really cool and uh, I was not expecting anything so I think that was a really cool random success. Um but uh but that so the the short film is the first short film that we uh, have made together as our kind of new little uh, production company um, sort of is taking off uh, in small strides. Um, but yeah, so it, it's uh, it's called Dead Leaf Butterfly and it's, um, it's like a psychological thriller slash drama. Um, and it's, it was a lot of fun to film. We, 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 you know, had all of our friends filming it and uh, we hired a, a few actors who we had worked with before, and um, it all worked out really well. So um, I'm excited to see it. It's it's in post production right now. Um, we're working on. Uh, my brother is actually scoring the film, and uh, a few other friends are doing the sound editing. Um, and our our friend uh, Brian, who was our our scripty on set, he was doing all of the. Uh, that work uh, and now he's doing all the editing um he's a really great fast and and smart editor um and uh and yeah we we had uh, uh uh hannah lee on as the main actress and then i was doing all the camera work uh our friends uh dylan snyder uh, and allison arm were working on it so it was it was a lot of fun um i'm i'm excited to see how it turns out there's a lot of things we can improve on and i will tell you it I've never done it before, but it was super duper stressful being the camera person because uh, the camera operator, because uh, whenever we're watching playback, I'm looking at the like they're looking at performance like little things. I'm looking at like the entire shot all the time because like the entire frame is me. It's like <laughs> it's like everything you see is what I filmed. It's like, oh, my gosh. It's stressful. So, uh, but no, it was it was pretty cool. We got some good stuff. Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. I, I, after a couple of years back, I I was a part of a forty eight hour film. Oh yeah, that was down a, in was Houston, a, yeah. and I was the DP. Oh and man, that was that was some stressful. That was yeah. a stressful day, starting at one, yeah. seven a.m. all the way till past midnight. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. 
Yeah, I can totally imagine that. I'm actually, I'm going to be a part of a 48 hour fest um, this year. I think it's like August 25th to the 26th. Yeah, so that, that'll be fun. <clears throat> so it's cool that a lot of things, you, you seem like to be work. Like you said your brother was a part of this. That, yeah, the dead leaf butterfly, and you do a lot of work with your sister as well. So you do, yeah, and then you work closely with your mom, who's who's the the red red carpet, red walk, yeah, yeah, red yeah. walk, yeah, something <laughs> like that. No problem. Yeah, yeah. She <clears throat> she's um, our publicist, and so it it actually works out really well because you know we're able to get to so many events uh very conveniently um and uh and it's it's a nice it's a nice in to have um she's been working with red walk for a, a few years now um so uh there's a lot of good connections that have come from that and uh that we we've uh, you know built up over the years um for events and for uh for pr so yeah it's uh yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, no, we, um, yeah, we, we all have kind of like an acting bug in the family because my, you know, my brother is helping with the score and he, he isn't so much an actor, but he does, you know, write music. He's an amazing musician, um, as well as my other sisters are amazing musicians and teachers. Um, and, uh, and my brother was my, 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 the youngest of the older brothers. He, um, he, was an actor at a time uh and uh well we all were technically uh in theater um and he he came out here for acting uh for a little bit but now he is uh he i think he still kind of wants to do something in the acting world eventually but um right now he is doing electrical engineering so <laughs> a way a way different um field but still something he loves to do so yeah and i haven't worked so much with elise uh, my uh, younger sister um i we did a show together for a while called the joey and elise show pretty wild name right uh but uh we did that and we haven't technically uh worked together on a short on a student film on a feat when it what any anything so that's still up there to be uh to happen but yeah so i like to include this in my conversations when i when i ask but you probably listed a bunch already but what what are you grateful for oh yeah man. yeah well i mean i'm i'm grateful for i'm, I'm grateful for uh, a roof over my head and uh knowing that i can sleep in my bed and everything's fine and i'm i'm healthy and you know it there's a lot of things that i kind of take for granted but i i do try to keep in check those things that keep me grounded that you know i'm i am fortunate to be uh born in a country that isn't under a like a dictatorship and that isn't um you know like it, it's not in despair like with, with poverty i mean it's it's there's so many other things that could have happened um in uh, in my life and so you know like i, I was actually reading an article about this man talking about how he he was born um he was born uh in a town that was it was just all korea at the time before it was north and south he was born in a town that was just like a mile south of what is now the border and if he was born a, like right there on the border or just a little bit over it he would have been there during the divide. And uh, so it's crazy how things just work out. Um, but no, I'm, I'm grateful for that. I'm also, I mean, in the acting world, I'm, I, I always kind of forget how lucky I am because I've gotten a lot of really, really cool things. I've worked on a, a lot of cool shows and, and movies and things and I, and uh, from a very young age. And so it's, it's something that I'm, I'm very grateful for, but I, I forget because I was so young when it happened and I'm, I'm still very relatively young. And so it, it sort of is now that I'm realizing that I, I really should be, I guess, more grateful for all the stuff that I've gotten. Uh, because there, I mean, there's a lot of people who are just now starting or have been doing it since 
the same age and they you know haven't worked hardly as you know nearly as much um or hardly at all so it you know it's uh, a thing that i i try to think about a lot that uh you know I, I don't know if you've seen the movie um uh la la land uh where i have not yet but i yeah i, I keep on here i want it makes me want to see it <laughs> yeah yeah no it, it's it's a great film there's a lot of things in the film that I relate to and, and can't relate to. I, I, uh, I mean, I saw, I relate to it in a very small way, but there's a scene where like, she's an actress and she goes into the waiting room for an audition. And there's, you know, 10 other girls there that are wearing the exact same outfit and look exactly the same as her. And so that, like, that, that's the whole thing of like, okay, like that's, that's true. I mean, if you go to like commercial auditions or, I mean, a lot of times theatrical auditions where they're looking for like a character or something, then, you know, it, it'll be, you know, you have to wear glasses and everyone's wearing glasses or, you know, something like that. Um, but I, I never really felt like it was such a burden or like I, I needed to get the part or like I, I was so stressed out by all the other people that looked the same. I, I kind of just was like, okay, it's, it's what I like to do. I'm just going to sort of put on my little, my, um, my horse race horse, uh, blinders and uh, and then just sort of you know do it uh, it wasn't something that I stressed over too much because it was just something that came naturally and it was uh, it was fun yeah. so you mentioned you'd, you've done a lot of cool stuff you've done a lot of cool stuff recently in the last yeah. year or two yeah yeah and absolutely I, couple of those uh, and some some bigger news as well i want to definitely touch on one thing then i'm one of those things is is something i'm grateful and I'm grateful for and I'm, i'll tell you why when we get to it but right. i definitely want to talk about your soap opera news yeah and yeah. and definitely that the other thing includes the long road home yeah absolutely so the soap opera was um, yeah, like a, a few years ago, um, and it was um, it was great. So I was on General Hospital, and I played a young Luke Spencer, and uh, I didn't know much. I, I was going into the audition sort of blind. I mean, I, I it was a dramatic, you know, show. So I I was just I was playing it naturally. I mean, it wasn't there, you know, there's not like there's no like real big like difference from regular tv versus soap opera acting wise it's just kind of the i, I mean i would i would say like there's no big difference there are some differences but they they have a different frame rate uh so it just sort of looks differently technically um but uh which which can sort of i i, I mean it could it's funny because it could be the same acting but it can sort of throw you off because you look like you're sitting there with them you know because it's like it's so much smoother than normal tv has a blur to it so you're like it's like a little jarring to look at but um yeah so no that was super fun it was also there that i realized that they shoot soap operas so fast um which is which is partly why there are some shots or some performances that aren't as great as they could be because maybe they didn't have as much time to perfect it while they were shooting it because they only have one or maybe two takes for each, you know, shot, um, or each scene or whatever. So, um, yeah, so we, we went really fast. We did the entire episode in like two days maybe or something or like, like three, I don't know. Like it was really fast. Um, and so, but I think they spent a little bit more time on this cause it, this was their 52nd, uh, anniversary of the show. Um, so obviously the show has been going on so much longer than I've even been thought to exist, uh, in the world. <laughs> so, um, but no, it was super. So the guy that I was playing the younger version of Luke Spencer, um, was played by Anthony Geary and he is now off the show. Um, and I was in his last episode as well, but, uh, for the anniversary episode, I, uh, I got to play with him so much. I got to be in his face. We got to yell at each other cause he was also, because I was playing the younger version of him, like 16-year-old, you know, Luke Spencer. But then he was also playing 
his father back in the day. So it was kind of, so I still got to play with him. Uh, and then they jump forward and it's just normally him. And so they would, you would jump back and forth and it was very dramatic and very great. Um, but, uh, I also, I got to play the, uh, <laughs> I got to play his, his twin, <laughs> his twin cousin fluke spencer ridiculous ridiculous um and uh, they slicked my hair down and i changed my voice a little bit it was great oh boy and i was like wow now i'm truly on a soap opera um <laughs> um but yeah it was super fun and um no i i I didn't understand the like the weight of like this show and how how much had happened on this show. So I was like trying to look at quick little like brief like summaries of what had kind of happened. And there's no real brief summary because the show has been going on for so long and so many episodes that have so many plot points that it's like don't even <laughs> try. So I, I got the general idea of the last season. And uh, that sort of helped, but man, that was, it was a lot to go into. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I, I can't help thinking of another Joey who, who uh, <laughs> would probably know where I'm kind of, if, if he's ever seen friends or no friends. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I love Joey, I, Joey Trubiani. Yep. <laughs> yeah, man. That's I, I, I love that. I um, I think when I was little, I used to quote that all the time. I don't have a big good memory, but my parents would tell me that I would like quote that all the time, and and I would walk like, "How you doing?" Because I hadn't watched the show before, but like that's all they would say because Joey Triviani, how you doing? And so I would repeat that back, and so that's all I knew of the show. Um, so <laughs> it was great, but yeah. I, that's of of all the other like character Joey's, I think he's probably my favorite. And just how he, how they portray the soap opera acting world, because you know he's he's yeah. actor, he's trying to make it in New York City. My favorite, yeah. I mean, my favorite, I think, is when he, I don't know what he did. He like pissed off the um, director or something or the writer, and then he, they he wrote does that him a lot. And then they, yeah, and then they wrote they wrote him out of the show, so he like randomly falls down yep. an elevator shaft. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like he, everything was fine, and then now he falls down an elevator shaft. <laughs> yeah, they gave me the shaft. All right. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, love it. There, there's so many great episodes of that. I know. I know. It's a fantastic show. <clears throat> so you had some some big news uh, you may have touched on already but you're is is that the news where you're you're coming back into uh, into keep on it's general hospital yeah, yeah 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 um well i uh i i think those were some rumors i'm not actually going back uh, officially that i've heard of um oh, okay. so so it would be a nice it would be amazing to go back i just haven't heard anything from from them or from anybody uh, you know in related to them so i you know I, it's uh, a cool thought uh, and i've definitely heard of it definitely, you know before yeah. like like a rumor especially when the the episode first aired it was a rumor and it was floating around and now I think it like kind of resurfaced again, but um, no, I I'm not officially, uh, you know, scheduled to go back at any time soon. I, oh, it's always good to clear the air of rumors that are floating around. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> but I want to move on to a year ago. Yeah. And when you, first heard that you were going to be on this a part of this mini series for national yeah. geographic the long road home that was crazy so we did the uh, i did the audition and then um well i didn't hear anything right I, I i waited a good six months um not waiting on that i mean i i completely forgot about it i was doing other auditions and working on you know other other things and so i i forgot about that audition so that when it came to it it was really funny because they had 
you know, my manager had been working on it this whole time uh, and had been pushing me. And so finally it was like March of last year and he's like, okay, so you know that project you did a tape on last year? Well, now we um, are getting really close on it and they want to pin you for filming uh, starting April 4th. And I'm like, whoa, what? So I, I was thrown off by how random it was uh, and how quick it was because I had done one audition. Um, and so they were working on it for a while, but they, I guess, I think what the, the deal was, they, they had the roles in mind. They just didn't know where they wanted me to, to go um, because they, they thought the audition was good and they just didn't know where they wanted me to be in the thing. So uh, in, in the cast. So I, um, I eventually ran, landed on the role for Jonathan Rydell and, um, uh, and so it, it all just kind of worked out, but, uh, yeah, it was like late March told me that I was pinned and then I started filming, uh, in April and then we filmed for three months in Texas. Um, and it was a very, very cool experience. <laughs> <clears throat> And a couple of things why this, what I'm excited for about this yeah. particular piece is first of all, you're a part of something that it, it, it's up for some awards too. Right. Right now. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, it's, 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 uh, it's being Emmy considered currently. Yeah. And it involves one, what I, what I've read, what, what I saw in the, in the first looks when I, after I was watching the whole thing, and I, I went back and watched talking about how it was one of the biggest film sets. Yeah. In North home. America. Yeah. At the time it was, it was, Oh man, I can't remember what the number is. It's like, a, it's like several acres though. Like it's huge. Um, and it, it took, it, it's like a several blocks long. Like you could walk down it, like just at a normal pace for a good like 10 minutes or so. Like it, it, it takes a while to actually walk across the entire thing. Um, so yeah, definitely. And very impressive, very well made too. Like they put it together very quickly. Yeah. And it was a, a, a very good thing. For, I know Texas has been trying to be me being born in yeah. Texas from Houston and oh, yeah. living in Dallas two hours away from all that happened last year. And I, I can't help noticing at the end and you know, the credits, mm -hmm. Texas film commission. It's huge for Texas. Yeah. Just everyone seems yeah. to go to Louisiana or New Mexico to do their filming, but this yeah. was actually shot filmed in Texas. It is. was, it was hundred percent. It was, uh, <laughs> yeah, all of it was filmed there. It was filmed, uh, because, all of our stuff where we were in Iraq was filmed on that set that they made. Um, and, uh, yeah, that was on the military base at Fort hood. Um, and it was, I mean, yeah, it was great. Um, it, they, they, they really, really did a great job with it. Um, and, uh, and yeah, and all the home front stuff was also filmed there, uh, on a, on a separate location in, in Texas. Yeah. And you, not only being a part of that, something big, put together you know and and done by national geographic but you got to yeah. work with some great talent as well Absolutely. i didn't recognize the name at first but i one of my shows i like to watch is house of cards yeah so mike kelly so mike kelly yeah 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 he's great man he he's really cool he um he's a genuine guy man he he, he really is a great actor and a genuine guy so i loved working with him he's cool so, so and the sign of a good actor and i've seen this from you and stuff as well <clears throat> to be a, if you ever seen house of cards oh i love the show man. It, he yeah. plays this very evil i take as a very evil character and yeah yeah in, it's, uh, no, it's I, yeah what, what was the rank at the time Valet, uh, valeski valeski was um I don't even, I don't even remember. He, anyway, was, he was the right hand man. He was definitely not evil. He was opposite. He was yeah, 
the nicest. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Well, the, the, the sign of a good actor is to just be able to take that one role and then leave, yeah. kind of leave that role and go to another role and play the, the exact opposite. Yeah. Um, I was confused for a second. Yeah, Valeski is his. <laughs> I was I was forgetting. Yeah, Valeski is his name in in our show. <laughs> I don't remember. I don't. I haven't seen House of Cards in a little bit, so I don't remember what his name is in that. Oh I know, man, I know it. I know. Uh, I feel like I know it too. Whatever. I. It's. Oh man, it's like right there. It just left me. <laughs> I know. It's like oh yeah, Valeski from House of Cards. Now. <laughs> Colonel, Colonel Valeski. I'll think of it eventually. I can't even. I'm my brain's dead right now. It was there. Yeah, I like it's starts like with right a D. There. Oh you ah. Uh, oh man. I mean, I mean, I could be sitting for for hours before I figure it out. I just have to not think about it, and then I'll think about it. Okay, so knowing what you know now, and all the great talent you work with yeah. and just give a nugget of advice for someone just starting out today, you know, leaving out of yeah. college. Um, I would say if you're just getting out of college um, or if you're, you know, still with your parents and you're still in high school or something or you're whatever, you know, if you're early twenties um, or late teens, I would say, uh, really at any age, it doesn't matter what age, but, um, that's most likely what you're going to be, um, like what age wise. Uh, I, I would say, I would say that, uh, the smartest thing to do is think about, um, think about the, how you, how you spend your money because, as ridiculous and stupid as that sounds like you're, you're smart with money, obviously, but it's like when you come out here, there's a lot of classes. There's a lot of, uh, you know, things for meeting casting directors and, and, and getting coaching and, uh, and coaching is important. Coaching is, is something where I would say that's a good place to put money. Sometimes though, it becomes a thing where we, we did this a lot when we were first here because we didn't, we didn't have anything to go on. We were kind of just sort of, we hit the ground running. We're sort of just like, everything is like new to us. So we, we put a lot of money into classes and things that now looking back on it, wasn't as important. It, it really helped experience wise, as far as understanding, you know, film acting and TV acting and transitioning to that, but super duper expensive, especially for Los Angeles. So it, it's, it's, it's a matter of being smart because I mean, you're going to be smart with your money anyway, if you're coming out here uh, and you want to be living on your own or living with some roommates uh, that live here. And so it's, you, you want to be smart with the money that you have. Um, and not everything is the, the thing that will, you know, make or break the career. You, you have to, a lot of it's common sense. Um, I'm, I'm now figuring that out because I, in becoming more independent. Uh, and I, I wasn't that way when we started, you know, I was like 10 years old when, when I started, um, professionally acting. Uh, so I, I didn't have to worry about all that stuff. Um, but now I do. And now I'm, I'm understanding what is an, a necessary thing and what may not be so necessary. Um, so, so kind of be, be smart with money and, uh, and I will do the same as well. <laughs> yeah, you just, it's just like anything. Play, play the yeah. numbers. Play the game. Yeah, I mean, it also takes it also takes like the drive to be here. So like you want to be here, you you want to do this. So you know you know what is was right and wrong for your career in in the heart of it all. Um, and so so with that in mind, you you yeah, you're you're gonna you're gonna go to the things that feel like are going to help your career because you know what you want so yeah so <clears throat> i uh looked it up i had to look it up because mm -hmm. it would have been bothering me doug stamper 
by the way. Doug Sandberg. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Doug, there we go. Yeah, I, I, it was right there. I was just trying to think of whenever, um, whenever Kevin Spacey's character would say something because I, I, I can't picture him actually saying it because Kevin Spacey's accent is more specific. So it, <laughs> but I can't think. So now, okay, that oh, makes. Kev sense. Yeah, Kevin Spacey is just another actor and himself too. Yeah. I mean, he's fantastic. I mean, aside from aside from you know personal things, he he's he's. I mean, I obviously those are not things I condone, but like he's a fantastic actor, and it's hard to it's hard to just kind of throw his entire career aside because of something that's now surfaced. And I it's 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 kind of it's kind of like I you know it's terrible things that happen, and people do terrible things, but and not great things, and and you know good things but it, it's 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 funny to me be, that everyone you know freaks out and goes crazy over it because actors are random people uh they are random people that have nice faces and can do lines naturally uh and and we idolize them and we make them so much bigger uh and put them on tv and put them in movies and make them so much larger than life than they really are but they're just random people um so those random people can do random things aside from being really good at acting so it's like you know they it's it's not that it i'm expecting them to be bad people but i'm i'm also like they're random people i mean they they <laughs> and they had a life before acting as well so it's like you know i don't know it, it's like not super out of the like out of the question that they that these people could be doing things like this you know but they're very talented people like i love i love kevin spacey's work i i i hope at some point down the road he'll keep doing stuff but i don't think anyone will hire him right now unfortunately but I love the stuff that he's done up until now. He's a great actor. So, <clears throat> so how did you know when, when was it that, that you wanted to be an actor? Well, it was, um, you know, I was in theater, uh, in, in community theater and dinner theater with uh, my brothers and sisters. And, um, and so I come from a, from a, a large larger family so it's uh you know i i had um it's my younger sister and then my older brother jonathan and then my older sister lauren and then my older sister julian and then my older sister michael brother michael wow i can't talk um <laughs> uh he's gonna watch us and be like excuse me i know what i am i am your brother um apologies he's also scoring the film so <laughs> Now he's going to be like, all right, I'll show you, sister. Um, <laughs> the, no, but um, we all did theater uh, together. Well, Elise was a little young, so she didn't do uh, as much. At later, I think she did a little bit with all of us, but mainly it was, it was me and up uh, to Michael. And so, um, yeah, we, we did we did a bunch of little performances. And then when they were getting older, they kind of stopped doing it as much they did more like inner school sort of productions and then i kept doing the ones that were the you know the hometown sort of stuff um and uh yeah it was around that time i guess that i sort of understood that i liked doing it um i didn't understand i i guess maybe i did but it was the sort of thing where i just did it i i'm not sure i fully understood what acting was i think i i understood what i was doing was acting but i wasn't fully like sure that this was a career that i was actually going to be going into I, I i never saw it as a career um or as a as a job that i would do for a long time or or even that i'd do film and tv when when we were suggested to come to los angeles and we came out here it was so new and so different but um, and I wasn't even then sure, like even the first few years, I wasn't sure that this was a career for me. It was just something I love to do. Um, so now it was probably like a good two, uh, th maybe even three years ago that I, I started really now, probably two years ago, two years ago that I really started understanding that this is 
my career and this is something that I um, am going to be doing for a long time and, and I think of it differently and I look at it differently now um, than I used to. Uh, it's more of kind of a, a business um, and it's still something I love to do, but there's definitely more of a a business side to it now that I, that I think about. But yeah, no, I, I, I knew from a young age that I loved acting. I just didn't know that I, it was going to be a, it was going to be what it is now, which is really cool. <clears throat> so this will def this will definitely be edited out later. Me being in sure. <laughs> myself, I love taking putting everything on the chopping block. <laughs> if you were going to. Uh, for an audition for a new role or if someone is showing interest in you for a role, what would, what would you come to them with as your gift as an actor that you have in the world that people need and want? Yeah. I, um, I guess what I, what I bring to the table is uh, I try to be a, as natural as I can. And it's, it's something that is very difficult. I've, been able to pull it off many times um but it it's it, it's a it's a talent and a natural thing that uh sometimes it's hard to to do if you don't know how to naturally do that um as far as like doing lines and being in a scene and making it very believable um and part of that believability to get that believability across is being natural uh in your tone and in the way you move and stuff and that's the thing about that's the thing about acting that's so difficult because everything is at play kind of uh, with voiceover. It's your voice, you know, with dancing, it's just your body. Um, but with acting, it's both. And so it's you're on screen and your voice is being heard. And so it's like you're, you're aware of everything that's going on. And so it's the ability to take all of that into account and make it sound and look natural. Um, so I, and I, and I feel like I'm more aware of it now, but I'm, I'm getting I'm getting better at getting back into it because I feel like I was sort of just doing it naturally, um, which is, I mean, probably why I worked um, on, on several different shows um, when I was younger. But I think as I got older, I became more self-conscious and self-aware of uh, what I was doing and acting. And so it made me maybe not be as natural as I, I could have been, uh, as I was before. And so I'm sort of getting back into that now where I'm more natural. I definitely have a lot more confidence and I think that helps. I have a lot more confidence in just who I am and I'm sure of who I am and I, and I, I'm aware of what I'm saying and what I look like and how I act and all that stuff. And so it's, uh, but I, I have confidence. And so it's, it's easy to go into a room. I mean, I'm still nervous as all, you know, all hell when I go into a, a casting room because it's just, they're sitting there at a table and there's just a camcorder and the person reading with me. And then it's like, go. And it's like, ah, and, and even though I've done theater with like hundreds of people looking at me, it's like different when it's a tiny room and it's just like two people or three people, or like if there's, you know, producers or directors in there as well, but it's still, it's a very intimate thing. And so it's very stressful, but I definitely do bring to the table the confidence and the comfortability that I have with the character and with the role. And I think that, that, that naturally comes across as being more believable. <clears throat> Thinking back to date over every, what you've done so far, what has been your greatest accomplishment? Greatest accomplishment. Um, I, I mean, the greatest accomplishment is the long road home, I would say, uh, for, for acting. Um, that was uh, that was the biggest thing I'd ever worked on, ever, um, at the time, uh, and still. And um, it, uh, yeah, it was, it, was a, it was a really interesting thing. I mean, there was just so many people working on it and so many actors, so many extras, and it was a lot to take in all the time. Um, but, uh, that was absolutely the biggest thing that I worked on. And, and it definitely <laughs> proves to be that, uh, recently too, because it's 
nominated for or, or considered to be nominated for uh, an Emmy. And those results, I think, are I think they're announced in like September or something. Um, but uh, yeah, so it's um, it's de- it's really cool to be uh, on the show that is making these accomplishments and making these strides. And so um, that's my biggest accomplishment. Um, I would say my big <laughs> biggest accomplishment, just in general, is that I am not uh, a drug addict. <laughs> I've heard of so many stories and, and I know my relatives and grandparents and such were, were <laughs> concerned about me going to Los Angeles at such a young age and being corrupted by it all. And uh, I think I was just sort of smart enough to know that you, you just don't do certain things because it's just smart not to, <laughs> you know? So uh, I, I, I haven't ever even, it's the sort of thing now where, you know, like people will ask, well, aren't you a little bit curious? You know, I'm like, sure, but not curious to act, curious enough to actually do it. So it's, it's like, it, I don't think it's ever going to be an issue for me that I, I will, I will never be on the front page of a newspaper. It says child actor turns up dead from a drug overdose or something, you know, because it's just something that I, it's a world that I never touched on. And, uh, never want to touch on um, because you know we're all humans and I I know who I am and I know that I, I probably won't but we all have those 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 bare basic instincts and and reactions to stuff and uh, who's to say that I won't become you know ex- you know extremely addicted to to something if I try it for one time you know um, so it's a uh, it's a sort of like what if scenario and it's not like it's all very like going to happen sort of things, but it's the thought of it per, like a very small percentage of it may be happening that I'm like, all right, that's, it's not really worth the risk. Um, so that is uh, that, but um, yeah, no, I, I definitely have. And, and I will say in acting in general, I have made so many accomplishments in, the shows that I've worked on in the, the films that I've worked on because man, those are some cool shows and I didn't really appreciate it when I was younger. I, maybe I did, but maybe not as, as much as I do now. I, I love all those shows and all the people I got to work with because I sort of take bits and pieces from that now. And I, and I think about what they did when they were on camera and what they did when, when they were giving their speech. And so now I think about that when I'm, when I'm doing that, now it's kind of cool yeah <clears throat> and taken from that who is someone that you were inspired by um kind of led you to say you know roll with it go and roll with it yeah um it's hard to say uh i i loved a lot of different um you know actors i loved a lot of different people um I mean, my, my, my parents, my mom especially was always very supportive and, and I was inspired by her and my, and my dad's, uh, work, work ethic. And so that was something that I looked up to and I was really, um, I was, it was from a young age that I was sort of ingrained that that work ethic will pay off and, and, and doing more. My dad likes to do, uh, a quote, uh, from, I believe his professor, I don't, I'm not entirely sure, but it was, um, a quote about doing more than the minimum. And, uh, and you know, because, because if you do the minimum, you're, you're doing everything you need to do. But if you do more than that, then it shows your commitment and it shows that, and it stands out so much more and you'll get more done and people will notice that. And so, um, and it's also just sometimes a good thing, the, the better thing to do. Um, and so, um, so I, I have that sort of ingrained in me. And so I was very, um, I'm very, I'm always very inspired by them and, uh, and, and the things that they have done in their life, um, uh, in architecture and in finance and, uh, and managing, you know, all of that. And so it, it's, it's very tough to, you know, to, to be an architect, as my mom has described, it's it's in a lot of ways harder than 
than uh, most careers. Um, but it's it's cool because that you know it's kind of like acting. You know, acting is it's a very ridiculously competitive field, um, and uh, so I sort of yeah, so I sort of take that mentality of working hard to get to the top uh, and apply it to acting. Um, from I and mean, I get that from my mom. As far as as far as actors go, um, I love. Uh, I mean, recently I love. Uh, I've always loved him, but uh, Ron Howard um, because he was a he was a, a you know a child actor, right? He he did mm-hmm. some shows. He was in Happy Days. He was. Uh, I mean, of course, Andy Griffith, and and um, very well known for for acting. And then more recently, in like the last ten years, uh, well, the last more so years, but I. The, more year, like I mean, probably probably fifteen years. Um, he has been very well known as a uh, director, um, and uh, and it's it's kind of cool because that's something that I I sort of want to get into. Um, I sort of want to, you know, be the person who orchestrates that. Uh, and it's I, I'm I'm stubborn when it comes to making a film because I want to do the editing. I want to do the sound. I want to do the acting. I want to do the guy who holds the slate. You know, I want to do the directing and I want to do all of it. So, um, so I think directing is sort of like the nice middle ground of all of that, where you can sort of have a piece in everything and sort of say what needs to be done, um, in those other little departments, but have an overall direction for where you want it to go. Um, and that's, that's a good compromise to doing everything, but not doing everything. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think, uh, I think directing would be a lot of fun. I also found that doing the camera operating was, was super fun. Being a DP was super fun. Um, and figuring out lighting and figuring out all that stuff was something I'd never done before. So, and I'd learned about it, but I never applied it to anything. So it was, a uh, it was a fun experience and maybe I can do more of that as well. Yeah, they, they, <clears throat> they always say you're a director. You don't want to be in f- someone who doesn't want to be in front of the camera. But yeah, it's actually when I I start I saw something recently of the past and mm-hmm. <clears throat> and they're <clears throat> they're they want to they, they're saying that as a director or as a as a DP camera operator. Mm-hmm you're always on the screen your work is on yeah. the screen yeah exactly exactly <clears throat> so getting close to wrapping up here mm-hmm. who is where was it gonna go Would you say you have any influence on on someone else? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think that I I don't know for sure, but I, I just from meeting fans and stuff and meeting uh, kids that have watched some of the Nick and Disney shows that I was on. Um, you know, it's really it's really cool to to see their faces light up because because, yeah, maybe because they probably they probably get inspired um from the stuff that i've done and that they've seen me in um and so so it's kind of cool to think that that could be a thing it may not be a thing but um but they are big fans and so it's 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 kind of cool to think that that you know they might they might be taking um you know that one performance i did on icarly or the the performance i did on um ant farm and and being like inspired to do that um, and maybe they'll, that'll get them into acting. And, and for some people, I know that's true because they've, they've actually messaged me about it on, uh, on either Twitter or Instagram. And they've, they've expressed that, you know, it was because of something that I was in that they saw that they wanted to get into acting. And that's, that's really cool to hear. <clears throat> uh, we talked about this right before we started podcast about your, your earlier roles. And you mentioned iCarly right. and, the one episode I, I I watched it the other day and preparing the I quit. It was kind of a almost yeah. a turning point on the show for the show. They're nearly yeah. calling it quits. 
They were. Tell us yeah. about that experience. Well, that was super fun, um, man. It was. That was when I I fully realized that um, that sitcoms or or well that like like sitcoms but like like Nick in general is very Nick and Disney in general are very um, their words are very specific. So <laughs> I would I would make uh, I would keep contracting words. And they were like, no, 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 just keep it like this. I was like, okay, okay. <laughs> and uh, and I would keep kind of paraphrasing like uh, an I or an um or something like that. But they would they would keep it like it has to be syllable specific um, because it's for the timing and everything. And so I was like, okay, cool. Um, but um, that was super fun. We they had built so many different sets for that. Um, they they had to build the because i don't think they showed it before unless they did in another episode and i forget but they had to make the front of the building um they had to make so because like they're in this apartment but they had to make the actual front of it so they actually shot that in the parking lot of the studios uh, and they put up like like sort of like a I mean, sort of like an awning. Like, I mean, it was it was sort of like a fake front, and then the camera was just angled so that it wasn't the the top of it where it stopped wasn't in frame, and then the rest of it. And then they had they had like so many other sets where we were on the scaffolding and uh, and it was like falling and and we were like gonna fall to our death. And there's a green screen underneath us and stuff and crazy sets that were built for this. Um, but that was super fun. I mean, we got to. We got to. Uh, I mean, it, it was it was kind of cool looking back because I always thought that oh my gosh, these actors are so much older and so much more mature, and I have to like I'm like working with them and stuff. And now looking <laughs> looking back on it, I was like they were all like eighteen, and like I was eighteen. Like I I I'm now twenty one. I was like thinking back at eighteen. I'm like, I guess if comparatively speaking, you're more mature, but like I was <laughs> not really. <laughs> so. Uh, so yeah, I'm still not mature, but that's besides the point. But, um, but yeah, so no, it's, it was super fun. I mean, and Dan Schneider was such a cool person to work with. Um, actually turns out he, uh, has the same birthday as me, uh, January 14th. Pretty cool. So oh, nice. yeah. Yeah. Learn something new every day. Yeah. <clears throat> So leading, and that's kind of a perfect transition into connections, big part of the industry. You, yeah. you know everyone you work with. Can, how many connections have you made that led to a role on a future project? Well, the the biggest connection that I would say, which it just got, I mean, it goes back to the long road home, is um, through a friend of ours uh, because we were seeking new management at the time. Um, and I, through a friend who had worked with this, this manager bef before um, had given us his contact and we met that friend through, through PR and then through acting. So like it, it was all like connected in a way we met them. They gave us, uh, Michael Foreman's contact. So I, I ended up talking with Michael Foreman and then Michael Foreman was, uh, who is my manager now. He was the one who, uh, got me the, who pushed me and got me into the long road home. Um, and if it wasn't, I mean, I believe it was, if it wasn't for that, I don't think I would have been on the show, um, or, or as I had as big of a role on the show because he, um, he, they, they really were looking for a character, uh, for me but they so he kept pushing and pushing for for rydell and all this stuff and so it, it was a it, i was i'm really grateful that he he was a part of it because if i hadn't met him i don't know if i would have been on the show like like it i mean i don't know things just kind of work out sometimes so that was a really cool connection to have yeah and still have <clears throat> oh that that's actually very cool to, to hear you actually did get to meet Rydell and 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 talk with him. I, I got to uh, I got to very 
briefly talk to him. Um, he is overseas. Uh, and so I, I didn't get to talk with him specifically. Um, but I did get to talk with other guys that were there like Eric Berkwin, um, and Matthew Fisk. And so, uh, and, and it was actually really cool too, because we got, um, to read Matthew Fisk's, um, book, uh, on black Sunday on that day. Um, and, uh, it was really cool uh, getting to to read the book from his perspective and then getting to talk to him in person um, about all of that. Um, and uh, it's, I mean, yeah, it was, it was kind of cool. It's kind of like meeting a celebrity because uh, you just read his book and now there he is. Um, so, and they're all really cool guys. They're really funny guys. Matthew Fisk is a, is a farmer and he, he looks just like it. He's got, I mean, he's tall too, man. He is like, six like eight or something and he has got some he's got big overalls and he wears them all the time and he's got his his daughter on his shoulder and i mean they're really cool guys their family is really sweet um and uh and the uh the agueros as well um they uh they were there they were um they, they mainly worked with uh ej bonilla who was our uh our our lieutenant uh on the show and so it, it, it was really cool getting to meet those guys because they could tell us firsthand and, and, um, really cool getting to meet those guys because they could tell us firsthand and, and, um, Matthew Fisk got to tell me firsthand about how Rydell was and stuff and, uh, and you know, the things that he said and he did. And it, it was kind of funny because they, they all kind of agreed all the all the soldiers sort of agreed that i i wasn't exactly like rydell um but i was sort of the i was the good side of rydell <laughs> because rydell rydell was a pretty weird guy um and uh and he yeah so he was a, he's a cool guy but he, he could be pretty weird so they just didn't show the weird stuff on camera basically <laughs> So I can, yeah. see what, I can see that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, it also takes me back to my dad, who mm -hmm. in recent years, he always wanted to be in younger age, join the Marines, and he never did because he was told, oh, this is prohibiting him from doing that. Oh, so yes. later on, he he became a contractor, and he, he was overseas in Iraq mm. and Afghanistan mm. and the stories I just heard from him and then watching the long road home. Yeah. yeah. Kind of confirmed what he said. And a lot of it was like really disturbing. Mm hmm. Yeah, no, it was, it was a, it was very surreal to sort of be on that set and then have these guys walk around the set and being like, yep, this is what it looked like. It just smelled worse than it does, you know, and you can't smell stuff through a camera. So it's not like there's no, there's no point to doing that, but it, uh, it looked just like it did, which is pretty cool. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> well, you uh, don't want to take up too much more of your time. No I, may, maybe in the, uh, in the future, have you on again and talk to you. Sure talk about future future roles and how far you've come since then but yeah. I, i'd like to wrap up today with yeah some bonus unprepared unscripted questions yes, yes. I, <clears throat> I i'm inspired the reason why i started this podcast i i'm telling you this for i I'm part of this group. He has his podcast, The School of Greatness, Lewis House. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you this because he's a Columbus, Ohio guy. Oh, cool. Very cool. He's lived in New York. Now he's out in West Hollywood. Nice. So, and he kind of does this. And I, I took these last questions and I framed it more in, to relate okay. more to film. Yeah. <clears throat> So here, here we go. Mm -hmm. That that will be the last question I ask. Okay. So, the first wrap up question for today: What mm -hmm. do you want to learn from someone who has seen success in multiple roles? 
what do I want to? Sorry, just to just to verify, you said what? What do I want to learn? Like, uh, who or who do you want to be as a? Oh, okay. See, yeah. As a mentor, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I really want to because there's times where I um feel like it's hard for me to really fully put myself into the character's mind and body and someone who does that so well. Um, and I, and I just admire his work and, and his, his genuine personality as a, as a, just as a person, um, is, uh, is Eddie Redmayne. Um, he's had some really, really great performances and he's obviously won the Oscar for the, for playing Stephen Hawking. Um, and I mean, he, he, he's a really genuine person. So I, I look up to that. I look up to people that, 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 you know, I, I want to aspire to be that. I want to keep doing that um, when I am very, very successful um, and be humble and be uh, respectful. Um, and I also want to learn that, uh, that, that, that ism about, you know, how to get into the character's mind so well that you like become the character and it's, and it's just a natural, it's a transformation. And so that's something that he does really well. That's something that Gary Oldman does really well, uh, really well. Um, and I, and I love both of those actors so much. I mean, the, the darkest hour was such an amazing film. I forgot it was him for a while. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so it, I, I, Eddie Redmayne would be like, kind of like, the coolest mentor in the world um i think um just because he 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 knows he knows so much about what he's doing he's a very he's a very well trained actor um he did a lot of theater so he he's very well trained as far as that and, and also in dramatic and film and tv i mean he's just a, a really really solid guy so yeah yeah uh second why do you think the film industry is important in our world today? Well, I think that the um, the film industry is, is important because, well, for one, it uh, creates a lot of jobs um, because one major motion picture that you'll see in the in the theaters can have like three hundred people working on it, um, which is awesome. Um, and so that's so all of these little indie films and feature films and and TV shows and stuff and short films they they create a lot of jobs and that's really cool um, and uh, but also aside from that it's it's a nice way to escape um, it's a nice way to to go to a theater and see something that's you know, different from from your life, or or different from reality that you can imagine, and and just and just watching it, um, and it's it's really cool um, to to be able to kind of have that portal into a a, a, a fake universe where um, that's a thing where like these characters are just doing random things that that you would uh, that you know you'd probably never think of otherwise, but it, it sort of just puts you in another place and you sort of forget about the outside world for a second and you sort of are just in this theater and you're watching this film and that's all that's important right now um and that's pretty cool it sort of just takes you to another world and i and i love that about acting yeah <clears throat> and <clears throat> mentioned before like creates the jobs like your brother's May may not be the the artistic type, but he, he said he electrical engineer. Yeah, there's a place in a on a film that that you may need an electrical engineer. Do Absolutely, you lights or Absolutely, no. Yeah, that, it's very true. Very true. There's so yeah. many times where they where they have to have the set with like different things, different lights, little bulbs or things everywhere, or or lighting effects. Um, or, or things that have to happen on camera at a certain time. And yeah, no, all that stuff is, is it has to be, it has to be made. Um, so yeah, it's interesting is like, you can take, you can take something like, like electrical engineering that isn't related on its own, isn't related to acting, but can be put into the film industry, which is really cool. And they do that a lot with like, 
like architects and and other designers who are building and making sets um, who again wouldn't normally be in the acting world or the film industry world but then when they're put into that job then that's then that's what they do and so it's it's kind of cool it's kind of cool taking those random professions putting them into the film industry yeah all right and here's I, I, I like to call this like the three questions, the three movies. <laughs> <clears throat> but I just I just wanna give give like a little plug. Where where can where do people see where you hang out the most online these oh, days? Yeah. yeah, well I mean for me it's like Instagram and, and Twitter are the top and then there's uh Facebook as well. So you can find those very easily actually uh it's just it's just my name so if you go to like instagram or, or twitter it's uh it's just joey luthman uh j-o-e-y-l-u-t-h-m-a-n um no space and it's just that and so it's super easy no co not complicated i think i think because i had my instagram and twitter accounts with that name for so long like i think i i think i had Twitter was, I think I was a little bit later to Twitter, but I did have my Instagram name like within the first year that Instagram was made. So it was easy for me to just have my name. Whereas people now are like, like a lot of my friends are like the real Joey Luthman or the real, you know, whatever. Uh, so like, because like they don't have their actual name because someone else took it. <laughs> it's so weird to me that people would take someone else's name for the sake of it. I don't know. Um, but uh, yeah, so those are there. That's where you can find me, and uh, Facebook as well. If you just look up Joey Luthman, you'll find my fan page. Um, same deal. Yeah. And just acknowledging you for for all the great roles that you already done, yeah, and I, I I see a lot of the thing like do my that you do. I see it myself. I. Yeah. And that's cool. That's cool. <clears throat> and you're just like you just said, you're being natural, you're being you, and that's yeah. all anyone can really be. And I acknowledge you for doing that and hope you continue to go down that path and yeah. you continue to get, get some great roles. Well thank you. Thank you. And now let's get into the other people said this is this is a fun question. Three movies. What are mm -hmm. three movies or TV shows that would best represent your life? Hmm. That would represent my life. Um, man, I. <laughs> or that you. Oh, no. I. Uh, I. Let me think. So. I know. Let's see. Um, I'm trying to think of the shows that I have seen. <laughs> um, movies. I mean, it's like I I watch some like a lot most of the time sci-fi movies. So <laughs> so most of them are like unless I take the the core like message of the movie. Um, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think. Uh, well, maybe maybe I can do that. Maybe I can do that. Like, like what's well, the core meaning of like a movie that is got other stuff going on to it? Um, maybe like uh, oh man, I had one in the top of my head for a second. I forgot about it. Um, shoot. Uh, let's think. Okay. Well, how about maybe like TV shows? So TV shows, I watch. I watch a lot of sci-fi too. I watch a lot of Doctor Who. Um, watch some Sherlock, Walking Dead. None of those are. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's think. Oh, uh, you don't see yourself as a zombie? <laughs> no, no, not really. <laughs> oh man. Well, I, I, hmm. Maybe a character you can relate with that you've seen. Maybe, yeah. So I know a lot of a lot of the time you when you watch a, even a book even you 
you yeah. you're into the story and there is yeah. one character that is actually like the, the, the director yeah. or the creator of the story the one character is actually that creator yeah. inside yeah and and it's just that's and everything revolves around him as that character it's like maybe someone you can yeah. relate to i mean definitely in the um in the book and uh sort you know in the movie as well now uh is you know ready player one like i i i definitely feel like there's sometimes when i you know i feel like i'm more like i i don't i want to be more secluded i guess um i'm i i want to be sort of to myself and uh and i mean it, i'm not you know I'm, I'm sort of an outcast i guess uh, not as much but it, it's it's sort of in that realm that you know i i am a, a lot of the, a lot of the time i'm actually uh, very introverted um and so i i like to sort of be to myself um there are movies out there that describe this and i've seen and i just can't think of them off the top of my head um but that sort of that sort of thing man i wish i had like a list of all the movies i've seen ever um shoot <laughs> i have, i have no idea i i i i have the idea of like the character in my head i just don't know I can't think of a movie that fits that description. Shoot. Or a show. No idea. No, I I can't I can't think of it. I, I wish I had them. I wish I knew more about the movies that I've seen. <laughs> Can you just t touch on that character that you have in Yeah, in well mind? well it's it's sort of like um I mean sort of like the character that, you know, that is uh maybe really good at computers or something and just uh or or really good at sports or something else but like it, it's sort of just maybe more so like computers something that like isn't as like super duper popular to everyone else and sort of just um i mean he's not like i mean not like a super popular guy and just sort of keeps to himself uh isn't mr ladies man you know um doesn't go out partying all the time uh but uh but sort of longs for that uh that world um i guess um that that sort of in ready player one it's it's like the the oasis the virtual world that you go into um that is is so enticing because it's all you can be whoever you want to be without showing yourself um i guess uh and so that's sort of that's sort of me in a way and that's like acting in a sense i mean i'm showing myself but i'm being other people um and so yeah i guess i guess that's basically it um yeah i'd say so <laughs> yeah <clears throat> well no, I, maybe to help you out but, but what you just what you described maybe was nathan's character freddie Oh yeah, yeah. He's a computer no, guy. Kind of kept to himself. Didn't know about how to interact yeah. with girls, but liked that's Carly. Fair. Yeah, no, that's fair. That's fair. No, I um, that just came to mind. That that is true. That is true. I mean, he he definitely is really good with the camera. He films for him, and and, uh, and yeah, he's not he's not Mister Popular guy. I mean, he's he's sort of just the tech whiz for the show, and and he runs all that. He's really good with the with running the show and, and keeping the, the stream going and everything and, and figuring out different, like, uh, like on I quit I Carly, like he, you know, he was doing the whole like satellite thing with the, with the connection between the, the two cameras and whatnot. So, um, yeah, yeah. He, I, I guess, I guess in a sense that that's, that's sort of, that's sort of what I would, I would relate to. Um, yeah, I, I could, I could see that. I can see that. <clears throat> well thanks again we we've thank you we, we've been talking for a little over an hour and you know, yeah there's a lot more that i want to touch on but <clears throat> that can be for another time for sure there'll be others other subjects other other roles to talk about other bigger roles
Absolutely. Definitely. Yeah. And continue doing what you do. Thank you, man. Thank you so much for having me. And I'll continue to to be on the lookout as well. well awesome. Well, thank you so much again, really. All right.